All right, since this thing passed the real world test, let's uh, let's take a look under the hood and see what we've changed so far since the last update video. Uh, let's uh, crack the top open. I don't have any screws on here, but yeah, here's here's what I got going on right now. Obviously, I have the keypad, the LCD, and the front panel switch. That hasn't changed. But what we have now is an internal speaker built down on the, on the bottom panel, which on the bottom here has a vent where it can, uh, you know, transmit its audio. And I, like I said, I haven't put the Ethernet in yet. That's going to be separate because I can't run all three of these boards with the onboard regulator. It's just too much for it. It's just, it just collapses the power supply down. So I'm going to have to come up with the, another regulator circuit here for 5 volts to maybe run an Ethernet shield over here and reroute some, um, some I.O. settings over here because everything's sharing some data lines. So I might have to move some data lines around to get that to work. That's a, a later, later project, but the main functionality seems to work, and that's what I wanted to prove. So everything's looking good here I have my I uh, my my output card here this is all my my transistor output for all the relays I do have a single let's just see here I have a single relay here that goes to the tuner because I did not like the transistor uh, uh, firing the tuner it turned out to be kind of an issue so I took out the transistor and used a relay for that it's safer anyway a little bit more isolation I could have put an opto isolator in there if I had one but I did not and I have plenty of these 4.5 volt relays so that worked out just fine and on this card here is the audio amplifier board which is the LM386 board and uh, I've made this circuit from scratch it's just a standard LM386 basic op amp uh, well amplifier so that'll that runs the main speaker for the audio for the shield for the synthesis voice synthesizer shield the microphone is internal on this as we've seen before so it's useless when the cover is on so I have made a, a adapter here that runs off into the back I.O. panel and on the back I.O. panel well actually before we get to the I.O. panel we've already know that we have the Philips Hue module here that we've modified and added into this so it's almost starting to look like a motherboard in some respect everything's on a socket everything can be pulled out and repaired or added and maintained so that's 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 a design feature that I come up with for this and um, I think it's gonna work out just nice I still have some spare room on these riser boards here in case I want to add some other stuff um, you know it just makes it easier because I don't want to keep pulling have to keep pulling this main circuit board off this you know unscrewing it from the chassis disassembling all the IO on the front and the back just to add a feature I can just pop up a, a riser card and make new um, options all right, so you know the wiring is pretty straightforward. It's just all I/O wiring, and it's just all power wiring. Nothing special there. All the I/O lines, the bus lines, are going out to the riser cards. And here is the um, here is the uh, the wiring for the output board, the transistor output board, going out to the antenna switch. So it's all going out to an RJ45 female jack connector that is on the back panel. So, and I put a fuse, uh, a fuse, a replaceable fuse holder on the back panel. So in case something goes wrong, uh, you know, a, a power supply regulator, you know, shits the bed or something shorts out, it's just going to pop this fuse. And it's just on a regular... Um, I think it's a five millimeter jack, or uh, I think that a yeah, five millimeter barrel jack for power. Let's turn it around for the back I/O. 
here it is here is 12 volts 1 amp there's the power connector jack power CP CP means center positive so I don't go jamming in a wrong connector in there and you know blowing shit up um, I probably put reverse diode protection in this eventually in case it does happen and then we'll just pop the fuse instantly uh, instead of reverse uh, running a reverse polarity into this which it may already have something like that on the Arduino boards I have no idea I have not looked at the schematic for the wiring on the boards uh, I mean for the layout of the board so I'm not sure if that already has that built in but I might just add that just to be sure if I don't if I can't find an answer for that which I'm sure I will all right so we have the program port for the Arduino Mega which is the board on the bottom there it's just basically you know poking out here so I can jam in a USB to make my program updates and here's the external antenna switch uh, RJ45 connector eventually if I do get the Arduino um, Ethernet shield working in this unit I will you know make a new hole for the Ethernet jack or it may even get a Wi-Fi module. I'm not sure. This is the whole beauty of this. You can do whatever we want. So let's move along down here to the jacks. The, this is just pretty much external microphone. That goes to that wire that's down here that goes all the way around and into the microphone jack of the shield. So we can do voice commands. And the other one goes out to the audio board. So that one is for that. The microphone, this one here is to the output to the tuner so we can initiate the tune sequence from the antenna switch function. IR in and IR out is pretty self-explanatory. IR in is going to be an input from an infrared receiver that is going to take codes from remote controls or any kind of infrared device. IR out is going to be like an IR blaster. It's going to transmit the IR codes back out of the box after it's been programmed from the input and it's going to spit back out codes that it's learned out to devices. So uh, yeah, this is pretty feature packed uh, so far. Um, well, for at least for what I'm doing with it, what I need it for. So it's um, and like I said, I still have plenty of room to expand on this board. I still have, I could probably fit another, another, maybe another card here and another three cards over here if I want. Um, so uh, it's got plenty of room to work with. And, you know, with the Arduino Mega, we get lots of memory to play with. You know, and the sketch here is, uh, I am only think I'm under a thousand lines of code right now on this. And um, it seems to be bug free as of right now that does not mean it's going to be bug free once I start getting into the infrared stuff and the Ethernet module stuff that's going to take a little bit of time to get that all straightened away and working in some harmony together with all this other stuff so uh, it's going to be a, a little bit of a battle because I'm not the expert programmer when it comes to this stuff uh, you know it's um, I do the best that I can and uh, I don't know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning this stuff too. So I'm not going to claim, I don't claim to be an expert on uh, this Arduino programming platform. So uh, that, that's pretty much it. That's the whole, uh, you know, the open box uh, tour for now. And um, yeah. So that's it. That's it for the night. I uh, hope you enjoyed the test earlier and, um, you know, this little overview of the inside of the box so if you like the video give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you in the next one have a good night